invest early uh, and invest a lot, as much as you can. My name is Travis Mockler. I was the National Digital Director for Governor Jay Inslee's presidential campaign. The type of work that I focused on on a daily basis really ran the gamut. Uh, you know, I think these days, you know, digital doesn't, <laughs> is a term that has essentially lost all meaning because it covers everything from fundraising to organizing to, you know, content production to live video to, I mean, you name it. So we had a small operation, but I think we really punched above our weight. Um, you know, we raised a bunch of money. Fundraising was one of my main focuses. Um, and I think that was primarily, uh, you know, result of the fact that the DNC laid out, you know, donor threshold uh, guidelines for the debates. Um, so, you know, that was something that we took really, really seriously, um, you know, spent a lot of time, um, you know, figuring out how to optimize our, uh, you know, advertising campaigns to bring in donations, um, figuring out how to optimize our email program to bring in donations. And that was really kind of a constant through thread of everything that we did. I don't know what was going on over at The Onion, but they seemed to take a real liking to us. Um, they gave us a lot of really good headlines to work with. And first one was something along the lines of like, you know, Jay Inslee smashes, uh, you know, through the walls of a town hall in a solar powered mech suit, uh, you know, demanding a climate debate. Um, you know, when we uh, exited the race, they had a headline that was something along the lines of, uh, you know, Jay Inslee slowly turns into a majestic oak tree saying, you know, I'll always be <laughs> here for you. Um, so, you know, they gave us these really, um, you know, quirky, uh, kind of lovely, almost, um, you know, softballs. Uh, and we were able to knock those out of the park. My absolute favorite internet moment from uh, the campaign was after the second debate. You know, Jay is a good looking guy. And uh, he put on a pair of glasses, uh, which, you know, we had debated back and forth about whether or not he should. Second debate, he wears them. And the internet just exploded uh, with all these people writing articles like, wow, Jay Inslee's like a really handsome dude. And there was, <laughs> there was one... I think from like, I want to say like the like New York Magazine or like BuzzFeed or something where the headline literally was uh, horniness for Jay Inslee is a renewable resource. Um, and the inter like people were just going nuts. I mean, Twitter was going nuts. There were a bunch of articles written about it. Um, and that was just like, you know, dumb and meaningless, but very funny and probably one of our bigger organic digital press moments, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Fundraising, more so, obviously we cared about the amount of money that we were bringing in, um, but what we really needed to focus on were hitting those unique uh, donor thresholds that allowed us to enter the first and second debates. Um, so I would say from my standpoint, um, you know, getting in those donors was absolutely my number one priority. Um, but, you know, it's kind of hard to separate that from anything else. Uh, in the program, as I mentioned, you know, when you're kind of infusing that goal throughout every aspect of the campaign, really. Um, so, you know, uh, I spent a lot of time making sure that, you know, we were projecting correctly to hit the goals when we needed to hit them, um, you know, making sure that we were using our social media program as a way to bring in new donors, um, using our digital organizing and texting program as a way to bring in new donors. Bringing in donors was uh, sort of the main, you know, the main goal of our digital program writ large. But, you know, I will also say that, um, you know, I think our social media game um, really punched above its weight for a campaign of our size. And, um, you know, in Governor Inslee, we had uh, a really great, just a really great guy. Uh, you know, he's authentic. He's funny. Uh, he's very passionate about the issue we were fighting for. Um, and to be able to have that kind of an asset, um, you know, for a social media program. And he was very involved, um, you know, always wanted to know what we were doing, always kicking us ideas, um, which was a, a lot of fun. 
in that sense, using him as a way to kind of build a social media program that could bring in donors and just generally raise the awareness of our campaign, um, you know, to bring in those organic donations as well. We were the only, uh, you know, candidate in U.S. history who had explicitly run on a climate change platform. Um, on a, you know, that was our issue, that was what we were running on. Um, everything that we looked at in terms of, uh, you know, policy really came through the lens of climate change. And so I think, you know, and there was a question around whether or not that would work, whether or not people cared enough about that issue. And, uh, you know, I think our theory that, you know, that can be a central issue through which you view every other issue uh, you know, was proven out by the successes that we did have. I think the most important uh, tactics that we used were just sort of showing that climate as a central issue could fit into the political narrative in a way that powered a campaign uh, through, you know, gaining supporters and getting donors in the door and getting dollars in the door. Um, and, you know, really giving us an ability to build a platform. You know, one of the things that um, I tried to do a lot was just kind of, you know, convince people that what we were doing uh, was working and that we didn't really need to go too far outside of the bounds of what we were already doing because it was successful. Um, and again, you know, experimentation, uh, you know, and shifts in strategy cost money and it wasn't necessarily something that we could afford, uh, you know, to spend either, you know, hard cash or, um, you know, staff time on. So, you know, kind of going back to this idea of us running a campaign where we didn't know whether or not it would work at all, um, you know, I think kind of infusing sort of the the fundamentals of a of a good digital program into the campaign and then throughout the rest of the campaign um you know worked really really well and that was um you know I think probably my my biggest uh accomplishment Invest early uh, and invest a lot, as much as you can, uh, in paid media for, you know, acquisition and persuasion. Um, you know, building a strong email list, building a strong text list. These are things that take a lot of time and these are things that take a lot of money. Uh, and, you know, the sooner that you can start spending on them, the sooner, you know, they'll pay back dividends, right? It takes a couple months for, you know, a donor to, um, you know, essentially pay for themselves uh, and then to start actually giving, you know, positive revenue to your campaign. So um, obviously be smart about that, balance it against other priorities, um, but, you know, build that support base that's going to carry you through the campaign early on if you can. And then the second I would say is, you know, invest in digital organizing off the bat. Uh, I think that digital organizing has to be a fundamental component of campaigns um, moving forward. You know, I don't, I, you can't run a field program. You can't go knock doors. Um, you know, you're putting the health and safety of, uh, you know, your volunteers and your staff and your supporters, um, you know, at risk. And you've got to figure out alternative ways of uh, meeting people where they are. And I think, um, you know, the only way to do that in a, in a world where you're not allowed to leave your house is, uh, you know, through digital tools and tactics. And I think, you know, I hope we're going to see some really interesting, um, you know, innovations in uh, digital organizing come out of this campaign because, you know, I think the Biden team now is in a position where they just, they have to do this. The truth of the matter is nobody knows when this pandemic is going to end. You know, nobody knows when we're going to be able to, you know, resume a normal life. Nobody knows what the new normal is going to be when we come out of this thing. Um, so, you know, my advice would be start raising a lot of money, start spending a lot of money online, um, and, you know, maybe sacrifice some of that, uh, you know, anticipated field capacity and, you know, transition those folks into digital organizers. You're not going to run a field program in the fall, probably not.
Um, so start building up those, uh, you know, start building up that email list, start building up that text list, start building up, you know, the digital organizing uh, capacity um, because it is really, it's labor intensive, um, but crucial. Campaigns, I think, and, you know, it's going to vary campaign by campaign, but I think, you know, on the whole, campaigns are finally starting to take digital very, very, very seriously. Um, you know, I helped the Hickenlooper campaign, the Hickenlooper Senate campaign kind of get up and running uh, in September of last year. And, um, you know, while I was talking with the campaign manager, you know, she was very clear that, um, you know, the two biggest teams there were going to be finance and digital. Um, and that is critical because as we were saying, you know, digital is everything. It's content production, it's social media, it's digital organizing, it's fundraising, it's communications, it's all of the above. You know, my advice to campaign staffers now on the digital front would be swing for the fences. Um, you know, you are not living in, you know, 2016 anymore. You're not even living li living in 2018 anymore. I mean, the way that uh, digital campaigning just grows by leaps and bounds from, you know, presidential cycle to midterm cycle to presidential cycle is just is really amazing to watch. Um, and I think, you know, campaign managers and people who are in positions of, of you know, real authority on the on the on campaigns and in organizations, um, you know, are going to be uh, by and large more open to, you know, aggressive proposals from digital staffers because, you know, it is everything that a campaign does just on a much smaller scale and I think to the extent that you can you know grow your digital operation into something that is strong and robust uh, and well organized and well financed um, you know it's just going to be to the betterment of the rest of the campaign in spades so yeah go big. <laughs>